Hello everyone and thank you for joining me on my kitchen table again. <laughs> this is one of those days where you make a couple of pours which makes it more easy for me to do larger pours and to make more pours and perhaps the angle is even better for you to look at instead of just looking from 90 degrees above my workplace. So just let me know what, what you think. If you like this angle, if it's okay or if you like I do my smaller pours or artworks in general. I will probably not be able to change it all the time so you will just have to live with what I can give you here but I think it's a pretty pretty nice angle to look at. In today's project I am going to make a golden pour on a 50 cm round canvas. I kind of like those round canvases and it is again a ring pour as so often lately but with my most favorite colors in general, which you can see here. It is from the Artina brand, which is the gold, the white and the Phthalos Cyanine blue and a black, which is from another company, which I forgot the name of, sorry. <laughs> but you perhaps you can see it here in the video. And the bottle that you can see on the left side is the acrylic binder that I'm using. It is from Bösner, a local arts vendor, art store and if you are within Europe, you might be good to get this stuff as well. So if you go to the Bösner homepage, I've linked it in the description box below and select your language. They have a couple of languages available and you might be able to get it shipped to you. I would really recommend it. I love this stuff. I'm not sponsored by it or whatsoever. I just love telling people what I use and the good side effect, if you use the same materials as I do and run into issues, I'm more likely to be able to help and assist with questions than for mediums that I have never used or do not be able to get here. You know what I mean? So yeah, if you want to have a try and get it and you can get it, get it. <laughs> yeah, so it's called Gaudi. It's an acrylic binder. And for those of you who don't know what an acrylic binder is, this is basically the same stuff acrylic paints are made of but having no pigments in there. If you are from countries where you cannot get this kind of brand, just look your Amazon or craft stores or Home Depot stores, whatever. If you can get acrylic binders, you should be able to get them and see if you like working with them. Since I'm using this stuff here, I had never any cracks in my paintings, even when I sped up trying them. So this stuff is really awesome. I've mixed them to the consistency that I usually work with and for those who don't know it is about two thirds of the binder medium, one third of the paint and then as much water as I think I will need. I try to have always the same consistency but I never ever measured anything. I just eyeball it and hope for the best. <laughs> sometimes it's too thin, sometimes it's too thick but you know the end result is what counts and most of times I get something somewhat pretty and sometimes I get somewhat super pretty. Sometimes, of course, as everyone here is failing at the result, of course, but I honestly think I did not not show you any of my artworks, which I did in the last 12 months. So actually, I think I showed you everything that I did, even if I think it was a failure. So make up your own mind. <laughs> So when everything was mixed, I just poured my paint into my measuring jar. It is a small one, so it fits about 450 milliliters of fluid. <laughs> and I just poured everything in there. It was pretty much paint, I think about 400 milliliters. It was almost filled to the top and started pouring it onto the canvas. This time I did not use any base layer of paint. So I just put it onto the pure blank white fresh out of the package canvas and did a regular ring pour. So just poured everything into the middle, made it pretty slowly to allow the, the rings to create. And yeah, then it was just basically moving everything around. What I've realized when I was moving it that the gold took over heavily. So it really was a lot, a lot, a lot of gold, which I did not really want to have in that amount. So it was really outstandingly gold and there was no way I could have fixed it. I could have just poured half of the paint down of the canvas, but it would have, I don't know what the design would have looked like then. So I decided to let it be as it was and hoped that some of the gold perhaps dries a bit darker at some areas where darker paint is underneath, which it did. 
so this gold paint is really opaque and has a lot of pigments so it really won over all of the other paints the black itself was almost gone completely although there was quite a bit of black in there the blue also did not end up being as blue as I would intended it to be but you know you never know <laughs> So, uh, but I like the design. It was it was really cute. I had a lot of thin lines. It was nice. I would have loved though if these lines would have continued on through the middle section, but they didn't. Gold won. So yeah, just waited to see what it looks like on the right version. And when everything was right, I had an intense gold look and feel, <laughs> and the outer areas more or less went into a grayish blue, which is a really beautiful color. So not a muddy gray, it is really a nice looking color. And I still like the design. When everything was still drying and not yet solid dry, I was looking at it and thinking about if the end result will look really pleasing when the middle section is really massively gold. You will see those little small lines in the gold as well, because the gold is a metallic one and it has a 3D look when it's dry. So you might have seen this in other of my artworks, especially on my first succeeded wing pour. I showed you in the close-up how this looks. If I can find the picture, I can put it in here. Yeah, but it is not really prominent from a, a distance. So if you're standing right in front of it, you will see it. But if you are a meter away or half a meter even, um, you won't see it. It just looks golden. And then I was thinking if it's perhaps a good idea to add some gold leaf there, just some crumbles between my finger and let it fall onto there. I did think about it about two hours made up my pros, made up my cons, I might be able to fix it to make it look more interesting. I might really ruin it and once you have sprinkled this gold onto this red paint, it, it's it's done. You cannot even think of removing it again. So I, it, I really was not sure. In the end I decided to give it a try just to make it more interesting to look at and hoped for the best. I'm really curious about your thoughts. If you think this was a good idea, if you like the end result and therefore watch until the very end just to see how it looks in sunlight. And for this video again I'm going to show you the varnishing process which I did and this time here I'm using the Liquitex Ultra Gloss Varnish which is one of my most favorites. So I tried the gloss varnish, I tried the satin varnish from Liquitex but effect like, look like, I really like the ultra gloss version the most. The satin one is also great. It gives you just a more satin look if you like that, if you don't want the high gloss finished resin like look. The ultra gloss gives you the resin look. It, it's really great. Normally it is designed to use a brush and to brush it onto your artwork a couple of times and you end up having a couple of these very thin layers which looks awesome in the very end. But you will see those brush strokes. The Liquitex varnish is drying rather quickly, so if you really have a very thin layer, it, it's dry in a couple of minutes. And of course you can apply as many layers as you want, but if you use the brush, you will always see a bit of the brush strokes. So, so far I have not found a workaround to remove any of these brush strokes, but I have used a different technique here, which will require a bit more amount of the varnish itself. So as you can see here, I put the varnish on, I used a brush and yes, I did get some larger brushes now. I did not have it on this video here, but I now have some larger ones. Yeah, great. <laughs> and I just spread it around and as I used so much of the varnish here, it more or less levels itself and pools together, like as if you add a layer of resin. You know, it is not as much and you will see some areas where there is more of the varnish and some where less of the varnish, which is not so much of a deal in the end because it dries pretty much level and solid and it is really awesome. So if you do not like to use resin and working with resin but want to achieve the resin look, you just need to use more of the varnish itself, put it on there, let it self level and let it dry. It takes a bit to dry because it's a thick layer and it's not intended to be that thick. So yeah, just let it sit, put something over it to uh, avoid any dust falling onto it and let it be. You will see in the end how glossy and shiny it is. And other than that, this is all I did for this project. <laughs> Again, as usual, as 
every time. <laughs> I hope you liked the result. I hope you liked watching. And if you have any questions, please make sure to ask me in the comment section or leave me a comment. I always love reading your comments. And materials, as usual, link below in the video description. Social media links and my Etsy store if you want to adopt any of my originals for yourself. You can, of course, also commission me for whatsoever artwork that I am producing that you have seen on my channel. And if you're new to my channel, please, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss any of my new videos. Share it with your friends, family and everyone who might be interested to watch it, to see it and to get to know me. And yeah, thanks once more for your time. Thank you for watching. And other than that, I hope to see you in my next videos. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye bye.